Have you ever had the urge to create a New Year's resolution in August? I'm sure you have, and it just so happens that I decided to make one for myself. So from this day forward, my resolution is to try new things that I've never done before. How does playing a 15 year old platformer indie game sound? Whether you've been on the internet for one year or ten, it's a pretty safe bet saying you are aware of the existence of indie games, although I must note I'm terrible at making bets. But seriously though, indie games are such a big part of internet culture. Hell, indie related things in general are huge. And yeah, it makes sense as to why. Many indie platformers start their projects on the internet, and many of them are well versed on the platforms that we all use every day. Things like Shovel Knight, Cave Story, Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Cuphead, Hollow Knight, Terraria, just to name a few of the most well known. The market for indie games is huge and has just gotten bigger over time, but since there's so many out there, there's bound to be some that fall through the cracks and become forgotten. Can you tell where this is going? Tower of Heaven is a platformer indie game created originally for Windows in 2009 and then got a Flash version in 2010, years before many of the most popular indie games were created. It follows a traveler by the name of Eid who takes on this mystical tower that is said to have riches waiting at the top with each floor they progress through slowly getting harder and harder. Pretty simple premise, and pretty simple game too, only taking the average person around 30 minutes to beat. Also no, I am not an average person. And hey, this game's 15th anniversary is today, which was totally not planned at all. So I think this would be a perfect time to make a video dedicated to talking about the game, for all of you who don't know about it, which I'm sure is a lot. For those that do know about the game, it's pretty infamous for its high difficulty. For me personally, I didn't find it that difficult, the first level, but it's hard to deny that this game pulls some pretty interesting moves to make the game harder. But I'll get into the gameplay in a bit. First, let's talk about the history of the game. Gameplay it is. Like I mentioned, the gameplay in Tower of Heaven is, for most people, pretty short. Unless you're like me and got stuck on the ninth level, you won't be playing this for very long. But just because it's short, doesn't mean it's bad. Since when has size mattered, right? Or, uh, I'm moving on. Honestly, I think the short length benefits the game, as none of the mechanics it introduces feel like they are dragged thin by the end of the game, which is something you would be happy to see in a difficult platformer such as this. And speaking of mechanics, I should probably mention the main one for the game. The biggest thing this game makes unique compared to other platformers of the same nature is the Book of Laws. Oh, yes, now this is my bread and butter. The Book of Laws is a gimmick where the further you progress through the game, the more limits are placed onto you, which not only makes the game more difficult, but would make any player have to rethink how they approach each level. Now of course, since the game is short, it's not like there's a hundred of these changes you have to play around, but just enough to the point where each level feels fresh, and none of the limits feel like they overstay their welcome. This is genuinely a really unique and fun mechanic that totally did not kill me many times when I reached level 6 on my first playthrough. If you know, you know. Oh, and don't even get me started on finding the secrets hidden in the levels. Finding them on your first blind playthrough was, mmm, perfection. But other than that, uh, there's not much else to talk about pertaining to the gameplay. It's really well designed, challenging, and a fun platformer, but that's not enough to consider a game a masterpiece, is it? Well, maybe for some people, but not for me. I need more. Where are the good graphics? Where is the amazing soundtrack? Where is the awesome ending? Oh, there it is. Before I move on to arguably the best thing about the game, I must talk about this game's aesthetics. They're really great. At first they seem to not be anything special, just an homage to that so retro style that all the 38 year old men on the internet love. But as you play the game more and more and progress through the stages, it really does grow on you and its charm becomes a lot more visible. And then the ending. Oof. The moment when the tower falls and the monotone pixel art transforms into full color and the ending monologue text plays over it feels so amazing your first time playing. Even on repeat playings, it gives this feeling that I've never really felt during a game's ending before. It feels like I went through so much despite the game being so short. And that's not even the best part. Okay, we get it. The gameplay is great. The aesthetics are great. The ending is great. But you know what's even greater? 
Yeah, it's the music. If I'm being 100% honest, this game's soundtrack makes this game. I really do think I would enjoy this game significantly less if the soundtrack wasn't nearly as good. That's not to downplay the rest of the game's amazing attributes, but come on. How can you not love this? The soundtrack takes the best of what you can do with chiptune and makes nearly every song in the soundtrack an absolute joy to listen to. My compliments go to the chef, or in this case, the composer. Yeah, that guy. That guy did a good job on this. Even if you don't want to try this game out for yourself, which if you don't then... What's wrong with you? I implore you to at least check out the soundtrack. It's amazing. So, that's it I guess. The game is simple, but I will never run out of things to talk about it. Like, did you know that there was a speedrun mode, or how in the Flash version of the game that's not accessible anymore that I had to look up on the wiki that you could build up your own levels? Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. Honestly, this game is kind of a fossil due to the circumstances around its release. Not only was it made pretty early in the internet's life, but it was also made exclusively for Windows on Game Jolt in the first year of its life. No release on Steam or any consoles later down the line when indies started hitting them. Its entire life this game has been regulated to a free download off Game Jolt. Which is really unfortunate since this game is really something special. I feel like if it was just a free download on Steam or something it would be way more popular than it is today. Hell, we live in a world where the stage adaptation of the game and Rivals of Aether of all things is more well known than the original game itself. Truly unfortunate. But hey, at least I get this game all to myself. This way I can call myself special and unique compared to everyone else for liking something that barely anybody knows about. This is what I prioritize in my life.